So the go vet command is an awesome help writing your code and helps protect abnormal, useless or even suspicious code in your application. And really you may already be using it without you noticing that you are actually using it. That's why in this short video we're going to quickly take a look at what this vet command is and how it can be even useful for your go application. Okay, so let's just first clarify what is even the vet command. The go vet command is pretty much just a static analysis tool that just scans your code base for like suspicious patterns or potential bugs in your Go application. And honestly, the vet command is pretty much just a collection of tools that can identify and report potential issues in your code base. In the end, it just helps you write better and cleaner code, find errors in your application, or even find useless code. And these are only a few things it can really do. Obviously, there's a lot more tools that you can use while leveraging the Go vet command. And obviously, I cannot really show everything in this short video here. But still, let's just look at a practical example when this go vet command is actually applied and how it can be useful. So how do I actually know how this go vet command actually exists? We can basically just check if that exists by just using go tool. So I've already talked a little bit about the go tool listing here in a few other videos. So feel free to check out them as well if you want to. But what we can see are all the available tools that we can basically run. And we can also see here the vet command in this case. What we can also see is trace, test to JSON, and pprof, for instance. All right, that's cool, but how do I use this tool now? It's pretty simple. We just say go tool vet, and then we can say help. And there we go. We now have executed the help flag here for our vet command and we can see all the flags and kind of commands we can leverage using the vet command here. Now the pretty cool thing about Z in this case is or in sort of all other editors as well if you're using go LSP you should be able to see the vet issues directly in your editor because go LSP ships a go vet version directly to really detect these useless or suspicious patterns in your code and directly help you you in your editor without really running the go vet command. So let's just look at some code here. So let's just go to the main test.go file. We have two files here, the main.go file and the main test go file. And what we're going to do now to really showcase the vet command is just some boilerplate code. So let's just say benchmark um, test and then function and then we say b testing.b. And in here we could for instance say b.loop and then we say for instance, 10 times 10. Now we just got a really arbitrary calculation right here. And this b.loop is pretty much also a new feature in Golang 1.24, which is pretty much designed to make benchmarks faster and more robust and less prone to error than a traditional loop. Right, so before that we would actually have this sort of loop here. And it's literally the same thing, but I think with more safety measures and pretty much faster than this traditional loop here. All right, and what you can see in our editor is that this has like a yellow squiggly line under the function name here. And this is quite obvious because benchmark test function is not really respected because in the end, the convention is here that we use a capitalized T. So it's benchmark capitalized test function in this case and not the lowercase version, right? And we can double check this by just running go vet and then dot for instance, and then we can see the arrow right here or the warning right here as well. All right, let's just go back to main go. Let's just keep this warning here. Let's just go back to main go. And then we can introduce another issue for instance. So let's just say that we have a really simple struct and then we say a int. And now we want to kind of marshal this struct. So we say JSON and then foo. And this space here between JSON and foo was on purpose. Let's just quickly use this here. So let's just say foo create an empty struct here. And then we can say J for instance, we are going to ignore the error here and we say Marshall and then F. And then we're going to print line J here. Now go vet actually issues a warning here because Go's reflection conventions really suggest to use space separated lists of key value pairs. So in the end, it should be a space separated list of key value pairs in terms of like this. Right, so this is a pair here without really having the space in between the key and the value. 
So this is just wrong and obviously we can fix the warning by just removing the space, but let's just keep the space in here. And this is really a perfect example for using the govet command to really detect these sort of minor issues. The problem with this code here is that the code will perfectly compile and run without any issues, but it will not produce the intended output. Because really the struct tag we see here is pretty much malformed and the package encoding and JSON will simply ignore it. And whenever a tag is ignored, like in this case, or absent for instance, the package falls back to its default behavior, which is to use the struct's field name as a JSON key. So it will be A in this case. And we can actually test this behavior by just running go run main.go. And what we see here is obviously just a byte slice. Now we can transform this into a string by just saying string right and then if we just run go run may not go again we see the key value pair a which is just the struct field name but should be foo in this case and then we have zero which is correct in this case and if we run go vet dot we now see two warnings and the first warning is obviously regarding the struct field tag which is not compatible with reflect.structtag.get. And then we also have the benchmark test function, which has a malformed name. Clearly we can fix these warnings by just removing the space here and capitalizing the T here. And then if we run go vet dot again, we don't see any warnings at all, which is quite cool. And then we can run go run main.go again. And what we see now is foo, which is the correct JSON tag for our struct field A in this case. And that was really everything I wanted to say about the go vet command. Also a really handy directive in Golang is the new tool directive. Now, if you want to know more about this, feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.